we have discussed about the Middle Himalayas and the important ranges of Middle Himalayas. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about the Great Himalayas or Himatri. So, the region marked 1 here. This is the region where the Great Himalayas are present. So, it is the northernmost of all Himalayan ranges. Clear? Now, with an average elevation of 6,100 meter, it is the highest mountain range of the world. This point is very important. Just look at the number here. The average elevation itself is 6,100 meter. So, that speaks for itself. So, this mountain range consists of the tallest peaks in the world, the highest mountains in the world. And there are many mountains which are more than 8,000 meter high in this range. So, the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest, whose elevation is 8,848 meters, belongs to this range, the Great Himalayas. So, in Nepal, in the Nepalese language, Mount Everest is called Sagarmatha, whose translation is head of the world. And the Tibetans call it as Chomolungma. Clear? Now, this is Mount Everest from the base camp. Now, the other important peaks in this range in descending order of altitude. What is the meaning of descending order from big to small? So, in descending order of altitude are Mount Kanchenjunga, which is the third highest mountain in the world. So, the second highest mountain is Mount Ketu, which is in Karokaram range of Trans Himalayas. So, after this, we are going to discuss about Trans Himalayas. Clear? So, Mount Kanchenjunga, whose elevation is 8586 meters. Next, you have Mount Lhotse, 8516 meters. Makalu, 8485 meters. Cho Oyu, 8201 meters. Dhaulagiri, 8167 meters. Then you have Manaslu, 8163 meters. Nanga Parbat, 8126 meters. Annapurna, 8091 meters and then you have Shishpangma, which is 8027 meters. Okay. So, you can see how many mountains are there whose elevation is more than 8000 meters in the Great Himalayan range. Clear? So, just look at this image. So, this is Mount Everest and this is Lhotse. Okay. And this is a mountain called Amadablam whose elevation is around uh, 6,800 meters, if I'm not wrong. Very beautiful, right? Very beautiful and wonderful view. So, proceeding. The number of peaks which are more than 7,000 meter in elevation exceeds 40. Okay. So, in the Great Himalayan range, the number of mountains whose elevation is more than 7,000 meter it is more than 40 in number. So, some of the important mountains having elevations between 8,000 meter to 7,000 meter in this range are Nanda Devi, Mount Kamet, Namcha Barwa, Badrinath, and Trishul. So, these are the important mountains whose elevation is somewhere between 8,000 meters to 7,000 meter and which are in the Great Himalayan range. Okay. Now, let us discuss in detail about Nanda Devi. So, Mount Nanda Devi, elevation is 7,816 meter, is the second highest mountain in India after Kanchanjanga and it is the highest mountain located entirely within India. Now, Kanchanjanga is not located entirely within India. Kanchanjanga is on the border between Sikkim and Nepal. Okay, so India-Nepal border. But Mount Nanda Devi is located entirely within India. And its elevation is 7,816 meter. So, you can call it as the highest mountain in India located entirely within India. So, Nanda Devi is part of Garhwal Himalayas. So, please don't worry about this name. We will discuss about Garhwal Himalayas when we discuss about the regional division of Himalayas. Okay. So, Mount Nanda Devi is part of the Garhwal Himalayas and it is located in the Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. So, this information is more than enough. And this is how Mount Nanda Devi looks like. Okay. And the area around the mountain is Nanda Devi National Park. So, this Nanda Devi National Park is part of Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve, 
So that will be discussed in detail in environment and ecology. Please don't worry about that. And there is an important point you need to keep in mind. The Nanda Devi National Park is part of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Place in India. Clear, right? Now, the Great Himalayan Mountain Range Arc. So it is shaped in the form of an arc like this. It ends with Nanga Parbat in Gilgit, Baltistan in the northwest. And it ends with Namcha Barwa in Tibet in northeast. Clear, right? So the Great Himalayan Mountain Range, it is shaped in the form of an arc. In the northwest, you have Nanga Parbat. In the northeast, you have Namcha Barwa. So these are like the end points of the Great Himalayan Mountain Range. Okay, so just look at this point. The Great Himalayan Mountain Range arc ends with Nanga Parbat, whose elevation is 8,126 meter. And it is situated in Gilgit, Baltistan area of Kashmir in the northwest. And in the northeast, it is the mountain Namcha Barwa, elevation 7,600 meter, present in the Tibet region. Clear? Now, the mountains of the Great Himalayan range have steep southern slope and gentle northern slope. So, very steep southern slope and gentle northern slope. So, just imagine this to be the southern slope and this is the northern slope. So, very steep southern slope and gentle northern slope. So, gentle northern slope because this northern slope of the mountain, it gradually merges with the edge of Tibetan Plateau. Clear? So, this is about the Great Himalayan Range. So, I hope you understood. We have discussed all the important and relevant points which are important from exam perspective. So, I hope you found this video useful and informative. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best.